There we go. Thank you, Simon. Simon Fielder uh, with the big breakfast weather there. Uh, vanilla in the house this morning, ladies and gentlemen. No way, no way. No, no, no. Yes, wait. Uh, and, uh, still, you're working on your new album, aren't you, girls? Yes, yeah, we still writing. Okay, there we go. Uh, do you know what? I can hear a cry, ladies and gentlemen. Read Let's enjoy it. Read all about it. Read all about it. Let's take a look at the Times, which uh, Raymundo is holding. Uh, Auditor probes dome sell off. The government spending watchdog begins an investigation into whether ministers secured the best deal uh, for the sale of the Millennium uh, Dome. And also a uh, picture there of the Queen oh. Mum. Come on, Come on, Mum! Come on! When Oasis do their next concert, they should always dedicate Live Forever to the Queen Mum. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? God bless her. Oh. <laughs> She's putting her new band together, Cockney Rubble. <laughs> OK, uh, let's go through to the Express. Flights near crisis point. Britain's senior air traffic controllers say that the rise in air traffic make a mid-air collision inevitable. It's inevitable now. Uh, if you're flying today, it's a lottery up in the skies. It really is. I don't want to freak you out anymore, but literally, uh, a crash now is inevitable. Uh, especially with the decline of trains, everyone taking more planes. People don't like taking the car to Newcastle, the trains to Newcastle, they fly to Newcastle. Yes. Except for you, who goes by Previan. <laughs> Previan. I that's did. A, that's a I did. Uh, welcome aboard, uh, Donna Air, Previa to Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's... Uh, you're flying on Donna Air. I didn't know where we're going. <laughs> but, hello, welcome aboard, Donna Air. Has anyone got a map? <laughs> I see, is there a doctor on board? And, uh, yeah, OK, I'm going to go on to the sun. Here we go. Uh, Harry, that's, you know, that's still one of my funniest memories, doing this show. What? It was when we flew back from Dublin, having done the St Patrick's oh, Day show. Word. What, when you went missing? No, like pub crawl? No, that was, yeah, that was funny. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> no, on the way back, yeah, Dr Fox, when Dr Fox was in front, was sitting in the, in the road... No, not that Dr Fox, the real Dr Fox. The real Fox. Dr Fox. The Capital Radio <laughs> DJ, and there's a load of kids who've gone, it's Dr Fox. And the pilot's gone, uh, if there's a doctor on board, please contact the doctor. <laughs> and, uh, and all the kids are going, Foxy! Like this. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Dr Fox is not really embarrassed. Uh, it doesn't really embarrass. It's like he's going to have to admit. I've got to tell you, Gag. I'm not medically qualified. Right? So, well, it's it's actually, a, it's actually a DJ thing. Yeah, I, I'm not actually medically qualified. But if she's got any last requests, I've got the capital jukebox down below. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's go to Harry Potter, Drug Shock. What's uh, this? What? Yep. What? The latest book, uh, he becomes a junkie. No, it's not that. It's uh, syringes. <laughs> he becomes a child junkie. Uh, no. It's Harry Potter, Drug Shock. Syringes are found at the film studios uh, where Harry Potter's being filmed and police received an anonymous tip-off that drugs were being used. <laughs> Bless <Excuse> you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dan. Bags of energy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How good is our time? Do you know what I mean? It's good. Even with sneezing, she can do that. Denise Van Aten, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Well, I don't know if it's funny. I think it's pretty sad, actually. Uh, presenters have to do that. Do you know what? Let's get in there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, right. People from the North. This is in the Sun today. This is in all the papers today. New survey out. People from the North smell of rotten eggs and cabbage. What? So that's that. Donna? <laughs> Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi. 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 Uh, no, it says, when they sweat... A study shows. Nice. Meanwhile, <laughs> residents of Essex are likely to have a fishy whiff. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of Scots, according to this, reek of goat. <laughs> That's only if they haven't cured their jackets properly. Um, what? This, is, this is in all the papers. It's a medical service. It's about diet. What, I smell That's fish? That's what it comes to. It says here, the distinctive body odours are due to regional diet variations, uh, says Kevin Gould. Argue with him, Ray. Uh, he said northerners consume 14% more dairy products than average, <laughs> giving them a sulphurous uh, smell. The Welsh similarly overindulge. It says this is going to give them uh, a smell a little like rotten eggs or cabbage. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I've never been asked to test anything like No, that. I haven't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, I haven't, actually. You're from Essex. Were you asked into the... No. Mind you. They didn't make them. They there is a fishy whiff. They never... <laughs> they never pulled me. No, they didn't. Apparently, people in Essex, they, they, eat a, they do eat a lot of fish and chips. 
Well, we fish. do, we fish. do. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. <laughs> uh, but if in doubt about someone's regional uh, origins uh, and you still don't know after a good sniffing, <laughs> normally I just ask them very politely for a stool sample. Oh! <laughs> Johnny! And I can look through that with a biro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with a biro? I don't know, it's science light, isn't it? Uh, it's that thing like on, on the X Files when they've got something amazing in front of them and it's just <laughs> this is something that's just come to Earth. And how do they experiment with it? I prod it with a biro. Uh. I love that. A Stuart's Wild Times over. Rod Stewart, 55, said yesterday he wanted to cut back on carousing after years carousing. of hard living. I don't think I can take it anymore. Uh, the wild times are over for me, he says. But I think only time will tell if a man in tight leopard trousers can change his spots. Yeah. <laughs> if a man in tight leopard leopards, it's a phrase, yeah. and you say, uh, it's like... Yeah, we know. So can a man we in tight know. leopard trousers change his spots? Because it's like... We know. We know. He's a cheater. Ah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> OK, this is a letter uh, from, I think, a pensioner, uh, writing to the sub. Dear son. Uh, I would rather go hungry than eat from the kind of menu TV's Lloyd Grossman has suggested for hospital patients. His suggestions of carrot and coriander soup and dauphin wild potatoes are for the upper classes. <laughs> he says, what? She says, what would an elderly person make of it? <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I think they'd be disgusted and wondered why they fought two world wars. Um, this is uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones as she drags Michael Douglas further into her... Well, you'll, see, you'll hear. Co uh, golden couple, Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones, are the star in TV's Wish You Were Here. No. Yeah. no. It's unbelievable. They'll sing no, the praise. Really? Yeah, really. In the programme, Oscar winning Michael. I think Michael Douglas, yeah? He, he, he produced, <laughs> I think, uh, Only Fools. I mean, not Only Fools, Nauses. <laughs> 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 and that's a fact. <laughs> he produced One Flew the Cuckoo's Nest when he was like 25. The guy's <laughs> part of one of Hollywood's most legendary families. He's, and he's really kept a good profile. Yeah. Goes out with, uh, with an English, with a Welsh starlet. Suddenly he's doing Wish You Were Here. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, we've had a fantastic coffee, you see. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it a part in a new Star Wars? No. Uh, is it to present a new Oscar show? No. Is it an option on new Harry Potter? Show? No. It's a free holiday, isn't it? <laughs> it's a free holiday, isn't it? You see? And what else are they going to do? Jack Nicholson on Earth, the hidden, um, the hidden uh, areas of the Norfolk Broads on a ten-day longboat holiday. <laughs> but Barbara Streisand, Barbara Streisand tries a hand at tin mining in Cornwall. Uh, anyway, here we go. This is uh, the fastest pheasant plucker in England has lost his job after 35 years because of Whitehall red tape, ladies and gentlemen. What's happening in this country? First, we serve up pensioners with carrot and coriander soup, <laughs> dauphinoise potatoes. It says here, Nigel can strip a bird in two minutes. <laughs> Doesn't say anything about the pheasants, did really. You vanilla? Vanilla, love that. See, did you do that line again? Say what's, that? Your, what's your fastest, girls? Two seconds. Nice. <laughs> That was presumably getting out of your stage wear. <laughs> OK, here we go. Uh, <laughs> Nigel can strip a bird in two minutes. Hey! Uh, hey. But rules now outlaw the selling of game unless staff have special hygiene training. How special could that training be? Uh, Dad of three, Nigel stormed yesterday. It's a sad bit of old England that is no more. He fears more pluckers could be hit, putting paid to the famous ditty, I'm not a pheasant plucker, I'm a pheasant plucker's son. I'm only plucking pheasants till the... Pheasant plucker comes. I'm not no, I'm not gonna but you, you see how you egg me on, but no. No. Faster, faster, you can do it quicker than that, boy. During the commercial break. During the commercial break. I'll do it privately for you, but let's not waste it on no, the nation. Young ears about. Nigel added the rhyme has been passed down from generation to generation. I can't see it lasting much longer. <laughs> But the, the, you use the poem anyway, don't you? It doesn't matter whether you're actually plucking pheasants, does it? Oh. Careful. Oh, again, every time I do it, I see it go... Oh. Uh, OK, TV blame for 27% rise in injuries. TV makeover favourites, changing rooms and ground force set a dangerous example for oh, DIY yeah. amateurs. Oh. <laughs> in changing rooms last week, floppy-haired interior decorator. <laughs> They're talking about Carol Smiley. Oh, right. <laughs> yes, that's right. Actually, they're talking about you here, Lawrence. Uh, it says, in changing rooms last week, floppy-haired interior decorator Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen was seen using power tools without tying back his hair. Oh! oh. No way, no way. Yes way. Lawrence, anything to say for yourself? I thought it was a hairdryer. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, oh, OK, nice one. And you're, and you're well out of that one. Just this is one to, uh, to see if you can beat at home. Oh, we have a five-year-old dog, a Labrador, named Benson, which we think has won the prize for eating the most over Christmas. Between December the 9th and 28th, he ate 24 sausage rolls from high up on a kitchen service, a surface, a box of after eights taken from a bedroom door, closed, uh, a box of mint chocolates, again from the bedroom. Why are they stashing all his chocolate in the bedroom? He also tucked into Christmas pudding, kitchen work service, a box of Cadbury roses from a bookcase, half a treacle tart from the fridge, a loaf of bread, again work surface, and a packet of chocolate fingers, again from the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> OK, do you know what, I've got one well, last one for you here. Prince William and George W. Bush's niece have been sending flirty emails to each other. It was revealed yesterday. <laughs> Funny that, when I log on looking for Bush, etc. OK. <laughs> do you know what? Uh, uh, I think it's a fun down with a pun down, ladies Yay! and gentlemen. <laughs> Was there a woo on that then? I've never heard before. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, that woo. came from over here. Was that you? Vanilla. That's brilliant. You literally threw your voice into the telly. It's amazing. Uh, a man writes a 160 page book on the A1. Pun says, road work. OK, it's fine. Not the band. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, not an A1. The band. <laughs> it's just a short read. That'll be a pamphlet, yeah. A uh, sci fi fan names all his sons after characters from his favourite show. Um, uh -huh. It's a good story, actually, that one. I think that's the, is that the page three lead in the sun? Yeah. Don't be distracted by the licentious woman. <laughs> Pun says, Car Trek. I think, actually, today it's Joe Hicks, isn't it? In the sun today, uh, wearing a construction hat and some denim shorts. Oh, you like Joe? Don't you? Joe's nice. Joe's from Leicester. Her parents have written How to me. How old is she? Uh, she's now 20, I think. She was, yeah, she was 17 when she started out. Parents wrote me a lovely letter. They're from Great Glen, just outside Leicester, you know. <laughs> uh, this is a page three beauty. Yeah, she's a page three beauty. She's a lovely girl. I don't want to be so involved in her life. A snooty construction <laughs> firm refused to sell a house to a blunt talking Yorkshireman, and rightly so. Pun says, Snob the Builder. There we go. Yeah. Those were the papers and puns, ladies and gentlemen. Denise, can I just remind them, one of my shirts is up for grabs this morning in Donna's bunker. Donna, have you got the number? The the phone 028985 all, all the ones. 028985 all, all the twos. twos or bigbreakfast at channel 4.com. I gather you've got to write a you poem. You can win a Johnny shirt, shirt, shirt from, uh, from his back. back. Yeah, it's the one from uh, the Samuel L. Jackson. With Samuel L. Jackson. Right, And put it in a frame. Um, Ray Winston is in uh, arguably the most uh, brilliant uh, British yeah. gangster film, I would say, since Long Good Friday. There oh, are three it. now Get Carter, Long Good Friday, and Sexy Beast. The others, oh. in the face of this, the recent ones are all cack. Uh, <laughs> this is brilliant. I hope it gets a massive run. If you, if you are a major distributor or you run a big cinema chain, make sure you book this in and really push it because it's a fantastic film. It's a British film. It's Sexy Beast. It stars Ray Winston and Denise, uh, Denise and I are going to be talking to him right after.